Yo, this is Alex Taylor from the NWA, and you're listening to the Wrestle Horror Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wrestle Horror. Greetings, viewers and listeners. Meat Hook Jim here, the Wrestle Horror Podcast. Couldn't do this without my co-host Donnie Hoover. Donnie, what is going on? Oh man, as always, just busy. Can't uh, ain't enough hours in the day for me. It doesn't seem like, especially this time of year. Right, you know, I got the Arnold coming up, and it's it's going to be a huge show, and we're just looking forward to it. And speaking of the Arnold and huge shows, our guest is going to be at the Arnold with us March fourth through the sixth. Alex Taylor with the NWA. Alex, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. I'm super excited about that Arnold too. Oh yeah, it's going to be a blast. And like I say, we're in the the convention center this time so we're not going to be at the uh fairgrounds like before the fairgrounds were you were you uh wrestled for us for at the ohio state fair there a couple years ago you know that's where we normally had it but now we're going to be at the actual convention center so yeah so it's going to be pretty exciting oh man i'm i'm so excited i'm a huge mark for arnold so i'm hoping to get a glimpse of the terminator but yeah well i'd say chances are good yeah i think chances are good since we're going to be in the same building all weekend and he's going to stop by you know like i said he came to the fairgrounds and kind of messed with robbie a little bit during that match so you know i'm sure he'll swing by and start some more trouble (laughs) i mean not to derail the conversation but terminator 2 greatest film ever made (laughs) that's your stuff huh I agree. Yeah. I, I agree with you, Alex. I love that film. Oh yeah, for sure. So, uh, you know, Alex, yeah, the national wrestling Alliance, you know, the resurgence after Billy Corrigan bought it. Uh, how do you feel about wrestling for the NWA? Oh, I absolutely love it, man. It's there are times throughout my career where you go to these shows and these locker rooms and, it's almost like your love for wrestling kind of dips just the the environment you're around. But when I got there, it's, uh, I just rejuvenated it. I love it. I love the locker room. I love just everything about it. The people in charge, it's, it's such a welcoming place, you know? You know, I've got to say, uh, you know, uh, without dating myself, which I'm going to do right now, um, I loved watching the NWA as a kid, Um, you know, Florida championship wrestling, Georgia championship wrestling, all the territories, absolutely loved the territories uh, with the national wrestling Alliance. And I was always a big NWA fan because being from the South, not so much a big fan of the Northeast promotion, but uh, I've always loved the NWA. And when I saw the resurgence in the NWA and, and watching power and everything, you know, it just brings me back to my childhood. Oh, yeah. I guess I'm a huge fan of, like, the studio shows and stuff. That's what I kind of want to do with New Ohio eventually. And, uh, you know, we kind of tested that out a little bit over the summer with the with the shows at the training center. But, um, yeah, like the studio shows, I, that's, where, that's what I grew up on. Yep, same here. Oh, when you get that studio up and running, you count me in, all right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> That's definitely one of my goals is the old school. Like I said, I was a big Georgia championship guy. You know, I said the, the four horsemen was my first uh, pro wrestling group that I ever that I fell for and marked out for. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a Georgia championship guy. So yeah, definitely would love to get a studio show going like that somewhere. This in Columbus. It's super expensive. So. <laughs> So, but yeah, let's uh, talk about you more than us. You know, what's, uh, where'd you get started at? I know when, when we met, it was uh, through Peachy Rodriguez, our referee and stuff. And he's been on the show a few times and he's the one that uh, turned me on to you guys. Cause you guys are down from down South in Tennessee, which is a place my wife actually wants to move to, but new Ohio wrestling in Tennessee kind of sounds dumb. <laughs> so, so I don't know if that's going to be happening. So, but uh, yeah, let's tell us a little bit about yourself there. 
Uh, I got started in uh, 2015. I trained at uh, Black and Brave in uh, in Iowa with uh, Seth Rollins, Merrick Brave, uh, Crotch, Shane Hollister, those Mm -hmm. guys. And since then, I moved back to Tennessee uh, and hitting indies everywhere. Nice. So how was it? How was it down there with Seth and them? I mean, do they run you guys hard and ragged? And there's there a trash can close by for the puking and all that, or how did they? How did they do theirs? <laughs> yeah, I was definitely one of the guys that puked on night one, and uh, <laughs> right. uh, the trash can was my friend that night. There you but, go. Yeah, it was great. Um, no shame. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, a lot of CrossFit. A lot of uh, probably the best shape I've ever been in. Probably didn't. I didn't keep up the CrossFit since, but That's right now was that no, part of his great. training? What was that? Was that part of his training? Did he add that in there and have you guys do that as well as wrestling training? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, when I was there, it was we had like an open uh, membership to the gym. I don't know if everybody took advantage of that. I was there every day, but I think now they it's part of like you have to do it part of the mm-hmm. class. I'm not sure, but it's been right. a while since I've been up there. Not a bad idea. Yeah. I mean, cardio and, and all that's a big part of it. Yeah. No, it was great. Uh, I know a lot of those schools with the names, I mean, those guys are kind of ra- rarely there, but I mean, he was there all the time whenever he was on the road. So that was really cool just to see how hard he worked and just give you an idea of what it takes to make it, I guess. Right. Yeah. No days off. It sounds like for him. <laughs> right. So uh, what were some of your inspirations when you started getting into wrestling, Alex? I mean, was there, there are superstars in, uh, in the past that you admired and, and really drove you to that point? Oh man. Uh, well, I'm, I always kind of been like attracted to like the, the, I'd say smaller guys, but they're still giants. Uh, the Shawn Michaels, uh, Eddie Guerrero's, the Ben Laws, okay. guys like that. I mean, just hard hitting and fast moving kind of guys. I mean, I'm a huge, uh, this came later after, I mean, when you're a kid, you watch what's on TV, but going back, uh, dynamite kid is my favorite of all time. Okay. Watching his old stuff, the British bulldogs. Fantastic. Okay. So, so, so you drew a lot of inspiration, uh, from those guys in the past and, you know, I know you're not the biggest guy, but you're definitely the guy that can get out there and perform. Oh, well, I mean, you said it, not me. I, I mean, I'm going to take your word for it, but. <laughs> you ain't going to disagree with him, though, are you? No, no. <laughs> well, we, we've seen you wrestle before, so we know you know what you've got. Uh, but I'm sure you've even improved since then, so. Um, how, how is, how is the present looking for Alex Taylor right now? I mean, I think it's looking pretty good. Uh, I just want to you know keep making these shots at the NWA, keep doing, uh, as much stuff as I can and see where I, where it can take me. Yeah. How did that come about? If, if, uh, you don't mind, you know, letting people in on that, like, did you reach out to them or did they contact you or was it because like work was tried and true and all that? tried and true yeah i mean basically in wrestling like in life it's not about who you know it's about who will say they know you right so i mm-hmm. I, uh, I messaged crimson one night asked him if i could uh, get on the uh, the ring crew and help out see what could happen so i went down to atlanta for a taping and helped out uh yeah i, I was told i might get a match which was exciting but um stuff changed i don't know i never got that match and but that was fine I, I i enjoyed the experience i appreciated the opportunity and we came back to uh st louis last year uh got the opportunity to have a match and then one thing led to another and now i am where i am so it's right. it's pretty cool yeah that's a great uh piece of advice for the young up-and-comers to catch on to about where you contacted them and offered, you know, to help with ring crew didn't ask, say, Hey, I want a match or here's my resume, you know, can I kind of come down to help out? You know, you went in there and made yourself known, which is, you know, a very good thing to do. And, and a lot of, a lot of the new guys need to uh, take heed to that and, and, you know, adapt that, that philosophy as well. Yeah. You're never too far along to help out. 
I was at a show last year, uh, an indie show here around Chattanooga. Jerry Lynn's helping out with the concessions. He's helping load stuff up because, and Jerry Lynn doesn't have to do that, but that's just the kind of guy he is. So that's just examples, you know, you see a guy like that do that and you just follow his lead. Yeah, so there, I seen a picture on uh, the internet floating around a few months ago where they were showing it was a picture of mouth of the South Jimmy Hart setting out chairs, you know, setting chairs up. And he's, oh, yeah. a, you know, he's a Hall of Famer, legend, and everything else. And, you know, he's not too good to get out there and set up, you know. So good deal. I mean, that's probably, that's, I'm sure that's what opened the door for you was, like you said, went there and helped out. And then, you know, now look where you're at. That and they saw this hair and they couldn't right. resist it. Yeah. Then they said, add the beard to it. <laughs> <laughs> now, the beard might be gone by the next time you see me. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there's some, unfortunately, there's there's some kids out there that are training that think that promoters are just going to reach out to them um, when they really need to reach out to the promoters and do whatever it takes to, to get their foot in the door. And I think that's becoming more and more prevalent, but you see people like yourself that, are taking that extra step to make yourself known to the promoters instead of waiting for somebody to reach out to you. Yeah. I mean, there's thousands of guys out here waiting around and they're not coming to you. You gotta, I mean, they're, if you work hard enough, you'll get to a point where they come to you. But until then, I, I know it's a uh, kind of cliche at this point, but you got to pay your dues, right? Oh, yes, absolutely. Gotta Never earn, stop. <laughs> gotta earn that spot, man. Uh, as Cody Hawk says, earn your spot, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So like I, you know, like I was saying earlier, we got the chance to see you live, you know, at, at the Ohio state fair when we were there and uh, you know, Peachy had mentioned you guys, he said he'd, he'd worked a show that you guys were on and ref the show there. And uh so we brought you up and, and, uh, and, you know, you and Nick, a couple guys and, and, uh, yeah, you guys were fantastic. I mean, you know, you guys worked your butts off, you know, your matches were solid. You were, you know, very polite and, and, you know, respectful and cool and, you know, in the back. And, uh, so, yeah, so we're glad to have you back for the Arnold for sure. I mean, now that COVID and all this other crap is, you know, was all of us shut the world down is, I mean, it looks like it's heading that way again, unfortunately. So just wait till April. Don't do it till April. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, I mean, like we're, we're excited to have you back and we're, you know, we're glad to see you, you know, starting to get them breaks that you're getting. So that's very cool. I appreciate that. Yeah. I had a lot of fun at that fair show. And I would like to point out that, uh, Nick, AKA Jamie Stanley has never beaten me one-on-one. And so I'm just going right. to put that out in the world. Yep. Now it's recorded. It's, it's, it's fact now. <laughs> so, yeah, like, like I said, it was a pleasure having you guys. And uh, we're looking forward to what you're going to bring in the, at the Arnold. And we're bringing a fellow NWA up with you, uh, Fable Jake's coming in as well. Yeah, and, uh, Fable you know, Jake. Yeah, so, yeah, it's going to be exciting seeing him. I've never seen him, uh, you know, work and wrestle before. So, you know, he looks like he's a pretty solid guy and a tough customer. So it's going to be fun to watch him. Oh, man, he's great. Uh, you'll you'll thoroughly enjoy him. He's he's a character. <laughs> I do, I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's what we like. You know, we like fun, loving characters. So this is going to be an amazing stage for everybody involved with this. I mean, being uh, on the on the main floor of the Arnold is just going to be, ama- you know, amazing. I just said it several times. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a great way for people to see you. I mean, there's going to be there's going to be talent out there. There's going to be scouts out there. It's a great venue to get yourself out there even more. Oh yeah. Yeah. And like I said, you know, we're going to be there for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but you guys are, you and, and, and Fable Jake are only going to be there Saturday and Sunday. So, you know, you'll be there two of the three days, which is going to be awesome. So, you know, normally we did a big tournament, which lasted the whole weekend, but with it being three days now, instead of two, we kind of switched it up and we're just doing like five, you know, full wrestling shows within three days. 
So it's going to make it a little less, you know, chaotic. And, uh, you know, it's going to be fun to give you guys more time to, you know, prep and get ready and put on, you know, great performances. And, yeah, you know, like I said, it's the Arnold, so you never know who's going to be there. You know, anybody can, you know, be there. It just takes the right person at the right time to see the right stuff, you know. Right. Maybe I'll get cast the next Terminator. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> Yep, excuse me. My cat decided she wanted to get up on my computer, so I had to grab her. <laughs> I'll oh. start clicking buttons. Yeah. Uh, I'd grab my cat, but I think he's sleeping. <laughs> this one can't stand it. I mean, she's like, I need to be in your face. <laughs> mm-hmm. Especially when you're when you're doing something. Of course. I mean, you ain't doing yeah. nothing, they don't want nothing to do with you. <laughs> That's her asshole. <laughs> All four of them. I've got four of them in this house, and they're all assholes. I just got the one, and he's enough for me. <laughs> I've got two dogs, too, and the dogs keep them in check. No. There you go. You got your own petting zoo in there. Yeah, well, not by choice. You can blame my wife for that. So. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Donnie? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> so who's your... uh? I don't want to say your favorite opponent. Who's your toughest opponent? Let's start with that. Um, Jeremiah Plunkett, I'd have to say. Mm-hmm. He's, he packs a punch. He's uh, busted my nose a few times, blacked yeah. a couple eyes, but. A couple taters here and there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's from Tater Peeler, Tennessee, so <laughs> right. it makes sense. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. So have you guys worked a lot together or? Yeah. Yeah. All over, all over. Yeah. I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah, all over. Oh yeah. And I say, that's kind of how I was back in in my day when I wrestled is me and uh, Sherman tank. That was my, that was my guy. And that's how we were. We traveled around and we probably, you know, hurt each other more times than we didn't you know we but we were you know we're best of buds and we just knew we're going to go out there and we're going to have at it and you know we're not going to say sorry until we're back in the back and you know if, some something. reason your friends hit you harder What's that oh yeah about? yeah right yeah and he had a nasty clothesline too he'd knock the wind out of me damn near every time he hit me with it <laughs> it's like, but yeah but i mean he was like one of my favorite opponents we just go out there and literally like beat the shit out of each other and and uh, just come back and love it, you know, and ready to do it again, you know, the next weekend. So, yeah, so I get it. I get the, I get the chemistry there. Oh, yeah. So who, uh, have you found a favorite yet besides him and NWA with all the, all the talent there? I mean, I've only had uh, a couple matches so far, so mm-hmm. I'm, uh, I'm not sure yet. We'll we'll see. I mean, there's definitely a ton of guys that I would like to get in there with. Yeah. You're still eyeing everybody up, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Got to size them up. <laughs> so let me ask you this, Alex. I mean, there's a lot of promotions out there that are doing intergender wrestling. Um, have you done any intergender matches? Uh, maybe one or two in the past. Tag matches. I don't. No, I've never done a one-on-one intergender match. Okay. All right. All right. It's just, I mean, you know, I look at some of these indie promotions and, you know, there's an indie promotion here where I live called uh, Future Great Wrestling uh, that's run by Cody Hawk. And uh, there's quite a bit of intergender wrestling going on there. And I was just curious. Okay. How do you, how do you feel about intergender wrestling? I mean, it doesn't bother me. I, I guess uh, if it makes sense, it makes sense. Uh, and wrestling doesn't always have to make sense, I guess. So, as long as it tells a story, right? Yeah, I mean, you put a five six guy in there with a six seven guy that's three hundred pounds. <laughs> what, what's the difference? You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Uh, if it's a good match. It's a good match. If it makes sense, it makes sense. Well, let's see. What what did we do at at uh... Zucchini Fest, Donnie, we had a 400-pound Jake Shepard versus a 180-pound Eric Smalls. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, and it was a great match. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll be uh, honest. I don't think I've ever revealed my thought about about intergender matches, but I'm kind of torn 50-50, to be honest. Okay. I mean, I, I watch them, and I respect, you know, I respect what it is. I mean, I get it. And, you know, the girls can go just as hard as the guys, and it's sometimes even harder and better. But, you know, that's that's on the business side. But on the fan side, I kind of – I kind of frown upon it just for the, you know, the guy hitting the women type thing and, you know, the way society is nowadays. Since just for some reason, I guess I'm just old school when it comes to that. You know, I, I don't believe in putting your hands on a woman type of thing. And, you know, which I know today's society is different and people think differently. But so I'm kind of torn. You know, I, I enjoy watching them just like, you know, watching them girls go in there and, you know, work their asses off, you know, just like the guys and stuff. But you know, it's just kind of from a, you know, from the father and I don't even know what, side i'm on you know just seeing a you know a guy and a girl like you know the guy just like smacking the shit out of her or something i'm just like ah, it's like like i don't know if i kind of i don't know if i dig at or not you know so i'm just kind of weird about it i think you know it's it's not for everybody and i was just curious because you know i keep seeing it more and more you know and like mm. i you know like uh, i watched shauna reed wrestle matt taylor right not too long ago you know and she's wrestled scotty amos and oh yeah I think that but uh and i've seen harley fairfax go against ryan michaels and you know it just you know i'm on the fence i i like it but as long as it tells a good story all right yeah and if it doesn't tell a good story it's not a good match Mm -hmm. did 2020 take its toll on your fitness Well, body slam the pandemic and get back in shape with WrestleFit. This innovative program combines all the fitness regimens you'll need to reach your goals. The WrestleFit workout will bring strength training, cardio, and the world of professional wrestling together in a fun, new, and exciting way. Have yourself a blast working out with dumbbells, kettlebells, slam balls, ropes, tires, and an 18-foot full-size wrestling ring. The WrestleFit workout isn't just for pro wrestlers. The WrestleFit workout is for everybody. At the NOW Training Center, you can pursue your fitness goals and learn how to train like a professional wrestler without all the bumps, bruises, and slams with the WrestleFit workout. Go to www.newohiowrestling.com slash training for more information or stop by the NOW Training Center at 625 Eastgate Parkway, Blacklick, Ohio, 43004, Unit 6137. Yeah, yeah, but you you could say that about any any match, right? Yeah, that's true. Gender or not, that's yeah, you, true. You know, it doesn't have to be intergender. It's got to tell a good story. I mean, if you don't can't tell a good story, what's the point? Yep. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've seen some phenomenal intergender matches. There ain't no doubt about it. It's just I don't know. I guess the dad, because I'm a I'm a father of four daughters. You know, I have no sons and four daughters, so I kind of. I don't know. I just kind of, this is weird. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I mean, we had queen Amy and, you know, Eric Smalls do that match for us and stuff, but you know, I haven't, and I'm, I'm doing, actually I'm doing the intergender tag matches at the Arnold. And that's, that's probably like about as, probably as far as I'll go with it. You know, never say never, but you know, we'll see. <laughs> yep. hey, if it makes dollars. It makes sense. Right. All right. There you go. Well, I, I remember that Amy and Smalls matches. That was the first match I ever announced for you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, you know, it's got its place, uh, but it's not always. And, uh, you know, intergender is intergender and, you know, it's, this, it's all about the story. Yep. There you go. But we're, we're getting off topic here. <laughs> right. I, I, you know, I asked me a question and all of a sudden we're going to the left field. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's how we do it around here. Well, say we, we just right, talk and wherever it goes, it goes. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so, uh, you know, let, let's kind of steer the conversation towards horror. All right. So, since this is wrestle horror, Alex, you know, you said before we came on air that you've watched some of the major franchises. Um, in, in the franchises you've watched, what is your favorite type of horror movie or franchise? Um, big on slashers. Okay. Those are probably my favorite. Um, let me think. Like, I love the Scream movies. I wasn't thrilled with the, the newest one, but. Why is the, that? I don't know. I think I maybe I built it up too much in my head going in. And 
just a mm. little let down, but yeah, doesn't have nothing to do with Dewey. <laughs> oh man, spoiler alert! <laughs> right. Well, I didn't say what happened. I ain't gonna give that away. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Stop. I didn't say nothing. I just said Dewey. I, you probably don't have to say much about Dewey, but I get it. <laughs> so, but let me watch it first. <laughs> I noticed the uh, the Pennywise in the back. I did love the new uh, the It movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That, my wife got me that. She it was a it's a six foot and it actually it's an animatronic. It moves and talks and its eyes light up and and she found it at a bargain store for like half price and bought it. <laughs> so oh, nice. I I put him in here. But if I ever find me a, a six foot tall Jason animatronic, he's I'm moving him out and putting Jason in. No, that's my guy. Nice. <laughs> uh, when i was in high school my older brother worked at the movie theater so he would always come home with posters and like big stand-ups and nice. at one point we had like a nine foot jackie moon from semi-pro spinning a basketball in our garage it wouldn't fit in the house but <laughs> we just have ridiculous vin diesel stand-ups that no one wanted that he would just take for no reason <laughs> right like yeah hey, i got it that's you know i don't know why but i got it <laughs> Donnie, if you ever get the Jason, you mm-hmm. need to take Pennywise and put him in Haley's room. Yeah, I did that when I first got him, and I got yelled at. <laughs> Terry, Terry wasn't too happy with me. She's like, "That's her only safe space in this house. You can get that out of there." <laughs> she like gave me the business, so I had to. Put, I had to take it out. <laughs> and how old is Haley now? Uh, she's eight now. Yeah, but I had it like right in front of her closet. So when she'd have walked in her, her bedroom after school, she wouldn't even have seen it until it started making all the noise. And then she would have turned and saw it and probably shit her pants right there. <laughs> so, but yeah. Donnie, Donnie tortures Haley <laughs> with horror well, I, characters. Yeah, that's my granddaughter. Uh, <laughs> the, that Vin Diesel stand up I was talking about, I would, uh, I would take a ghost face mask I had, I would put it on it and I would leave it in places in the house and scare my mom and. She hated it. I think she eventually threw it away. <laughs> so, yeah, speaking of scared Haley, just uh, just tonight, I uh, but I bombed though. I didn't even get her. She's she's getting desensitized to it all. But uh, she was in the shower, and I had to go in there and take my contacts out. So I went and I got Chucky out of the closet, and uh, I like walked into the bathroom and and I stuck his like like I stuck him through the shower curtain and tried to make his laugh. It didn't even phase her. Yeah, you know, normally she'd scream and fall down, and it didn't even phase her. She's like, "You ain't scaring me." I'm like, "All right." <laughs> so I just went and threw him back in the closet. Like, you ain't no good anymore. <laughs> you need to back off for a little while. Let her forget about it. Oh, uh, that's the first time I've brought him out since the birthday party. Oh, okay. Well, she's, she's okay. Getting older. She's getting desensitized to it now. Bummer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Donnie, Donnie, Donnie would torture her on Christmas and birthdays with this Chucky doll. Yeah, I'd keep wrapping it up in boxes. <laughs> she, she'd open Dang. it up, and his feet and his hair would flop out when she pulled the yeah, lid. That's the Christmas spirit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I, I think that, that gimmick's over now, though. So yeah, it didn't even phase her. I was at least trying to get a squeal out of her, and nothing. Yeah, find something scarier. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, how do you feel about the Friday the 13th franchise, Alex? I mean, it's all right. It's not my favorite. I, I only saw the first one. I never dug too deep into that one. Okay. Just, I'm just curious because Donnie marks out bad for Jason. Oh, yeah. That's my guy. That's my guy. <laughs> Which I'm like, I'm like Alex. I'm a big slasher guy. I, I like slashers way more than anything else. So, but yeah, he's my number one. You can see I wrestled that. a guy uh, in a Jason costume in Georgia once, so I don't know if that counts for anything. All right, yeah, there you go. That gives you a cool point, you know. <laughs> he, he didn't sell much, but. <laughs> when or did he kill you? Uh, he definitely killed me. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, we yeah. were talking about doing stuff like that because, you know, we're in the haunt industry too, and uh, we've had been approached a couple times about doing a wrestling event with all horror characters like everybody get up and get dressed up in horror character gimmicks and do that and i'm like yeah i'm like i'm open to that for sure i think it'd be fun it'd be hard for the the people in the gimmicks and stuff with the mask and all that shit on (laughs) it'd be kind of hard for them to work a good match but you know it'd be entertaining yep yeah it sounds fun 
something we can definitely uh, visit in the future. I'm sure. I mean, oh yeah, do a Halloween show, and you know, I've seen other you know other talent do cosplay wrestling. So why not horror cosplay wrestling? You know, it's all right. There you go. Just got to get the right people in there. <laughs> So, uh, any other horror films? Okay, you're a slasher fan. You like Scream. How about Halloween? How, how do you feel about Halloween? I do love Halloween. Okay. I've, I've yet to see the newest one, though, so I need to catch up. Yes, watch it. It is very good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I liked it. No spoilers. But it is very good. Okay. And it's going on my list. And it's I already can't... on my list, but it's going up my list now. <laughs> Wait to see Halloween ends. Uh-huh. Halloween Kills was the bomb. Okay. Yeah, definitely watch it. I'll do, I'll definitely check that out. Have you ever seen Terrifier yet? That's a good. No. I don't know if it's really considered indie at this point, but that's kind of a good indie slasher with Art the Clown. Yeah. Yeah, he's got okay. some good. He's got some good kill scenes in that one. Yeah, how do you feel about clowns? I mean, Crazy Steve is a friend of mine, so <laughs> I don't I don't mind him. I like Crazy Steve. He's okay. <laughs> He's okay for a clown. <laughs> you guys watch uh The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. That was great. Yeah. Bly yeah. Manor, it was okay, but not not as good as Hill House, but yeah, Hill House good too. Definitely. Yeah, Blind Manor kind of lost me about halfway through. Like, I just, after about halfway through, I just kind of became uninterested. <laughs> yeah. Same, but I finished it. But, yeah. But uh, the, the movie Donnie mentioned, Terrifier, uh, without giving away too much, just think Hacksaw. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's the way it's used that is very gruesome. Right. I'm going thinking about Jim Duggan. <laughs> right. Not even close. <laughs> uh, I, I love Jim Duggan, but this one's a, a little different. <laughs> okay, a lot oh. different. You in the haunted houses or anything? Do you go to haunted houses during season? Uh, I've been a couple times. I'm not a big fan of crowds. Right. And they're usually filled with teenagers and. Oh. and- Drunk. They annoy me. <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Isn't that weird, though? Because I'm kind of like, like I said, I'm an introvert mainly, but, I, you know, and that's the same thing. I hate crowds. I don't like being in crowds, but then we do, you know, we do wrestling shows at fairs and conventions and, and you know, we're around people all the time. And it's just like, <laughs> it's kind of weird how that works out. Yeah. And we work haunted houses. So. Yeah, yeah, and we both work haunted houses, and we're crowd, you know, crowd. But that for me, that's cool because I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm a floater, and you know, I kind of roam around, and I can keep away from everybody and not be in the crowd so much. It's a really weird way to live my life. I don't like crowds unless I'm in my underwear and right <laughs> wearing wrestling well, boots, huh? oiled up in the undies. Then for some yeah. reason that makes me calm. I don't know. <laughs> right. like, that's just it, you know when. You know, you get you get an adrenaline rush from a pop from the crowd, right? Yeah. Uh, we get adrenaline rushes from scaring the shit out of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same thing. Like I said, I've had I've had pops from crowds, and I've had pops from haunts, and it's the same feeling. Yeah. So yeah, and like I say, we got a two a two day two day one coming up with the haunt I work with, and we're doing a Valentine's Day one at Carnage. So and it's a lights out. So basically, there's no they turn all the lights in the haunt off, and they give them a glow stick, and they have to go through with the glow stick. So you could literally be standing right beside them, and they won't see you until they get right up on you. You can count me out of that. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> oh yeah, oh uh, that's good. Like I say, we've uh, yeah. You, you see a lot of big muscular grown men, uh, you know, show their true colors and. <laughs> <laughs> cower me included i've even gotten scared doing it you know going through so but yeah it's a good time though like i said definitely you know it's just like wrestling acting you know improv you know live action you know if you screw up you can't reset you know you're just you know you're it's just same thing 
what gets me is you you watch these you watch these guys go through haunts like that. They get scared. The first thing to do is grab the girlfriend or wife and put them in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There you go. Meat shield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and some of them ain't even shy about it. They'll just blatantly, yeah, you're you're going before I am. You know, <laughs> they'll just like put it right in front of them. <laughs> Classic heel. Oh yeah. Classic heel move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, MJF times 10, you know. <laughs> so, Donnie, um, I think it's time to ask Alex the question. All right. Yeah, for sure. I'd say we'll uh, gonna give you the question here. It's uh, something we do with every guest we have on, and there's no right or wrong answer. So it's not a quiz. It's just a question. We just like to get inside the minds of our guests and see how twisted they are and if they're as twisted as we are. So okay. uh, the question is, you are the main serial killer in your own horror film. What is your go-to kill? My go-to kill? Mm-hmm. Like, what would your finisher be? Okay, okay. Uh, so you had to put it in wrestling terms. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. And it could be any uh, way, you know, weapon, no weapon, how anything, you, whatever you think of. Axe handle. There you go. Okay. Don't ask me why. I don't know. Axe <laughs> handle a- Alex sounds kind of cool, I guess. Axe handle Alex. There you go. There's your haunt character right there. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So axe handle to the head. Yeah. Or the ribs. I mean, however we got to get there. Okay. All right. Definitely. Uh, and, and once again, uh, we have not had a repeat in, let's see. Uh, 80 episodes now. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, we started around episode 50, and we're at, what, 131 now? It'll be 131. Yeah, so, yeah. No street. repeats. I yeah, love it. Street continues. <laughs> We've had some creative ones. There's a lot of twisted people out there. <laughs> I, I almost said vacuum cleaner, because that's the first thing that's in front of me. But I was like, yeah, I don't know how I'd kill somebody with that. Shove, shove the hose up their butt, <laughs> suck their guts out. And say that's a, that'd be a good cheesy beef b horror film. Shove one up their <laughs> shove one up their butt and see the guts going through the clear tube or something. <laughs> well, let's get a Kickstarter going and make that movie. <laughs> right here, you go. Make it happen. <laughs> Vacuum cleaner massacre. <laughs> It'd be easy to clean up too. Right, yeah, you already got. <laughs> No fuss. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, Alex, tell everybody how they can find out more about you on social media, the NWA, everything about Alex Taylor and your adventures. Okay. You can uh, find me on Twitter and Instagram uh, at Alex T902, uh, Facebook, Alex Taylor. Um, you can catch the NWA on uh, Fight or on YouTube. Fight it comes out on Tuesdays. Uh, Power comes out on Tuesdays, and it's playing on YouTube on Fridays, and NWA USA on Saturdays on YouTube. I don't know if I said that, but uh, yeah. And hey, when's this come out? This will be going out uh, a week from Monday. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, so I don't have anything to promote after that, but. Hey, you can catch me at the Arnold. I know that. Yep. yep. There you go. He'll be there. You can catch all of us at the Arnold. <laughs> it's going to be an exciting hey, weekend. Me, I mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they surely won't be coming to see us. <laughs> You'll be in the ring to wrestle. I'll just be in the ring to announce. So. Don't worry. This beard will be gone by then. I've been getting a lot of uh, Charles Manson comments, so I don't. I can see that. Yeah. I see the resemblance. <laughs> you should run with that. There you go. I'll keep that in my back pocket. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do the swastika on the forehead. I'd kind of skip that oh, no. part. Yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll cut that part out and right. the whole murder thing. But. <laughs> yeah, you can keep the murder giving, just you know, not the swastika, I guess. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't think I'd go over very well. <laughs> no. You could do the crazy eyes, and you know, it's like that one picture of him with those eyes. It's like, yeah, it's mm-hmm. creepy. 
But uh, this has been fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, Alex, thanks again for coming on Wrestle Horror. Um, again, this will be airing a week from Monday, which is the 31st. Uh, yes. Okay. January yeah, 31st. 31st. Yeah. That's good. I had to cheat and look at the calendar on the computer. <laughs> I just had to go back in my head and look at my calendar in my head. There you uh, go. Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey, he's awake. <laughs> this is Dusty, named after the American Dream. There you All go. Right. right on, the American Dream. Okay, the American kitty cat. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Um, Alex, thanks again for, for being a part of Russell Horror. For uh, Donnie Hoover and myself, Meat Hook Jim, uh, we are the Russell Horror Podcast, and we will catch you on the next episode. See Thank you guys, guys so much for having me. Thanks for listening. Make sure you follow us on all of our social media outlets, facebook.com backslash Russell Horror, Instagram at Russell Horror, Twitter at Russell Horror, on YouTube at the Russell Horror channel. And you can also find us on our website, www.russellhorror.com. <laughs>